welcome to Greg's Maker Corner. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about adding input shaper using a Badger box, uh, <clears throat> which is a nice little device that I picked up at Murph. And I'm gonna be adding it to my newly built Trident. Now I actually happened to print a cowling for my Voron Zero on the Trident just as a test print. And you can see there's a tiny bit of ghosting here. See how those that curve kind of echoes? Well, that's what we mean by ghosting. That's uh, not ideal, right? Here you can just see on Fabrico where these are sold. So there's a simple version. I believe there may be some, yeah, there's some other versions also. So you've got a single ADXL or you can get a dual for the bed slingers. You can also read the full instructions, which is pretty much right here. There's a PDF of it and I'll have this link. So I'm not going to read through all this here, but this gives you the idea of how you're going to do it and set it up. At this part of the video, I'm going to go ahead and walk through the steps that are required in order to mount the ADXL345 and get the Badger box working. So the nice thing about this Badger box is that it's kind of pre-done for you. All you have to really do is plug in a USB and connect it to your Raspberry Pi. Now, when you're installing this initially, um, you're gonna have to have an ADXL345 and um, there's instructions here on how to connect it. And see here, you just have to plug these pin headers in. Make sure you plug them in the correct way. It'll be pre-wired with this end, and you're just going to have to connect it right onto these. Now, these pin headers um, should be soldered on. If they're not, just try to shop around and find an ADXL345 that does have pin headers if, if you don't want to do the soldering work. Um, and then you also have to mount this to your tool head, which I'll do in a minute. If you have a bed slinger like the switch wire, you can also mount one of these um, to the bed and one to the hot end. And they're even labeled. One is H and one is B. You can see here that I've got a stealth burner. There is a little spot on the side of the uh, tool head right here. There's actually two heat inserts and that's where I'm going to be mounting the uh, ADXL sensor. Okay, as you can see here, I was able to go in and I just um, inserted the screws here and, and tightened them down. And I used uh, just M3 by fours. It's not going anywhere and that's how you want it. Next up, I'm just going to be connecting this end to the Raspberry Pi, and then this end, make sure you get the right cable tape and that you know it works with data. This end will go into the uh, Badger box. Now I've got everything connected up. You can see the ADXL here, connected to the Badger box, which is then connected to the Pi underneath. Now it doesn't need to be pretty because we're just going to be running it once, and you'll just need to repeat this process whenever um, you want to rerun it. So if you ever make a change to your tool head or maybe a change to the gantry somehow, um, you may want to rerun it. And okay, I'm just going to do the prerequisites here. The first thing I'm going to check is if I'm on the proper version of Clipper firmware. So I need a 0.10.0-4 or higher. And as you can see here, I am on uh, a higher version than that. So I should be good there. The next thing we're going to need to do is uh, shell out or connect to the uh, Raspberry Pi over SSH and then install this. And now I'm going to run this command. So I'm connected to the Pi, and now I'm gonna to try to install this package, one of the dependencies. Now I just installed Mainsail OS recently, and it looks like um, NumPy or NumPy, depending on your persuasion, was already installed. I'm also gonna run the sudo apt update, and it's going to go ahead and just update any packages that it needs to, which may take a little bit of time. And this is, um, this is also another step here. And then we're going to install this library here for matplot. And I'm installing the last library dependency and that's matplotlib. And this is what, um, it looks like, yeah, it looks like it's already installed. So I'm good to go there. Next up, I'm just going to be downloading the ADXL file and connecting it to Clipper. You can find the ADXL CFG file right in the uh, GitHub, and I will include the link in the description of the video. I've connected to my to Clipper through Mainsail, and then I'm going to go ahead and upload a file, the one that I just downloaded, and then I can click on it and I can view it. So you can see that it's already kind of listed here. Um, so what I don't have yet is this. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect uh, again with SSH. I'm going to check and see what that is. I should be able to get that device ID once it's plugged in, which it is by running this LS dev serial by ID command that you see right here. And then sure enough, um, I've got two of them. This is my octopus and this is the device that I just plugged in, the Badger box. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. And then it also gives you a clue here in the uh, ADXL CFG file what it should look like. So I went ahead and copied that and then I'm just gonna go ahead and paste it in. So it should look like that. Now I can do save and restart. Important stuff that you don't wanna forget is adding this include ADXL CFG. And then you wanna hit save and restart after you add that. And then if everything worked, shouldn't get an error. All right, now after you restart, you're gonna to wanna to type in the accelerometer query command. And you might get this invalid error first. That's okay on the first time. So try running it again if you get that and it should be fine, which it is. And now I'm just gonna run shaper calibrate and hit enter. And, oh, we got a home first, okay. Okay, I'm going ahead and homing it like it asked. I am going to be careful just holding these wires so I don't want anything getting caught too bad. Okay, so now that we've home, we should be able to run everything. But here we go. Shaper Calibrate, we're running it. So it did go ahead and move the head forward a little bit. You can see it's, I don't know if you can see it or not, but the tool head is shaking because the motors are moving very, very lightly. And it's going to take a little bit of time to get through this, and you can watch the console if you want as it goes. You can see it's just testing all the different range of frequencies. And while it's doing that, the tool head's uh, just vibrating and oscillating at different frequencies. And the ADXL sensor is keeping track of all that data. So it starts to get to the higher frequencies. It's probably in the 50s and 60s right now. You might really start to hear it. And that's totally normal. And I'm just watching it kind of keep going. When it's in the testing portion, it's testing out different algorithms to see what the most effective is for dampening those that resonance. Okay, and once the testing's done, it'll tell me wait for calculations again. And now it's giving me the best input shaper parameters for X. So it kind of spells it out here. All of this data is going to be saved as well on a chart. So we don't have to worry about writing it down. But now you're kind of getting your results. So it does all the calculations pretty much all at once for X, X and Y. So now what we can do is we can go ahead and hit save config or we can um, take a look at the data as well. I'm just gonna go ahead and do save config and then I will try and pull up the data and show that also. Gone ahead and uh, went into my printer.cfg file and you can see right here that it recommends Shaper for X is MZV 67.2 and Shaper for Y um, also MZV and 45.8. You can actually see the raw data that was dumped to a CSV file just by checking the contents of the files. Um, in this case, the file was named Calibration Data X. There's also one for Y. Now, if we want to get a chart, a chart view of those, we can go to the Measuring Resonance page um, from Clipper and we can copy these two commands here. Okay, I, I went ahead and changed the name of the file um, because they they were expecting this resonance is Y, but it's actually called calibration data. Um, so I renamed it to that, or renamed it in the command. So now that's going to go ahead and create my graph of that. And you can see it's outputting that right now. And then I'll do the same thing for the Y. So here you can see I just sl slightly tweaked this and replaced X with Y and so on here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. So now it's gonna do the same thing for Y. And it's just saving it to a PNG file, which I'm then gonna take a look at. Okay, and here are the results. You can see that I've got the X on the left and the Y on the right. And this is what was generated <clears throat> by the script that I just ran. This looks pretty typical, I think, but yours is likely to look different. But uh, this gives you a general idea visually just where the resonances are and what the different input shapers look like. One thing that I really like to test is this ringing tower. Now I've already cut it down to 10 millimeters because I think that's really all you need. And I will have a copy of both the full height one and the shortened one in my link in the video description. After you run input shaper and disconnect your Pi, you're gonna to wanna to come in here and comment the ADXL include out, otherwise you're going to get an error. And then once you do that, you should be able to print as normal with input shaper. When you are doing the initial input shaper, uh, when you're running the ADXL 345, I recommend you try to 
put your printer in however you're going to be using it. So ideally with all the panels on, um, especially ideally the doors closed even if you can. I know with for me it was a little hard because the cord had to go through here, so I just left this door open. Something else you may want to do after you run Input Shaper is increase your max acceleration. So you can see here what the recommended Input Shaper on mine, which was MZV. Um, on the X, I could go as high as 13,000. That seems really high. Um, I don't think I'm going to go that high, but it's interesting to see that. On my Y, I can basically take it up to 6,200 is what it's recommending. So I'm probably going to increase it. The default file I was using only had it set to 4,000. So I could probably go, I'm thinking probably five to 6,000 and I'll be fine. And that, that's going to make everything move a little bit quicker, but it'll allow you to print a lot faster and without having issues where you get ghosting and, and other quality problems. I recommend reading through the residence compensation documentation if you really want to learn more about the theory behind input shaping and ringing frequency and all that fun stuff. It walks you through how to do this manually. So I am, again, I am printing this um, tower because if you see any of this artifacting, that's, that's what you're trying to get rid of with Input Shaper. So after you make these changes, whether by running it manually, um, which I cover in one of my other videos, or by doing it with the ADXL 345, um, you should be able to eliminate that. So that's, that's the goal here. I also want to understand the trade-offs between acceleration and smoothing, which is spelled out here. So um, as acceleration increases, so does smoothing and the actual gap in the print widens and you can kind of understand what that, how that might impact your print. So something to keep in mind when you're selecting input shaper values. And my understanding is when you do the automated way with the ADXL 345, it's going to pick some kind of a happy medium between the two. And you can learn more about that on the measuring resonance pages, which does talk about the ADXL, ADXL 345 as well. And it, it, it walks through a little bit of that, but um, that's a lot to, to deep dive into. Um, it also gives you some example graphs and charts and things and how to, it talks about how to interpret them, talks about some of the trade-offs. So it's worth a read if you really want to dig into it, but I would just, uh, I've, I've been pretty lucky just going with the default values that the, the shaper returns and it seems like it's good enough for my purposes. All right, and my uh, 10 millimeter tower has just finished. And it's looking pretty good. I'm going to pull it out here and take a look at it under the light. Okay, so I've got this in the light here, and I really don't see any echoing of the, the waves here. There is a little bit of bulging right after it, but that's just because I haven't calibrated all the printer yet. Um, same on this side. This is the X part of it. This is the Y. So it's looking really good. Now, if I were to see... Again, little echoes of that curve. That would mean that I probably hadn't turned on input shaper yet, but overall this looks really good. And that's what you can expect when you run input shaper. Input shaper is really a good idea to run when you're calibrating your printer. It's one of the first steps that you wanna do after you just calibrate the rotation distance. Um, I would also, just as an aside, uh, encourage you to take a look at the Ellis, Andrew Ellis tuning guide. Um, that's got a lot of really good information if you want to really get some uh, perfect looking print. So in summary, I'm very happy with the Badger Box. Uh, it's a great option. It's, it, it allows you to get up and running really quickly because all you're going to have to do is plug in a USB, plug it to the Raspberry Pi, connect your ADXL 345, and then mount it to your, your tool head. And once you do that, you're going to have to still install a few packages on the Raspberry Pi, add an, add an include file that has already been made for you and then you're pretty much off to the races so it definitely saves a lot of time any kind of wiring uh, connections um, that that can take a little bit of time there are definitely other options I know LDO also provides um, a kit and it's it, it may be around 15 10 15 dollars depending on what you look at that one connects with a ribbon cable I'm not a real big fan of the ribbon cable but you could probably do something very similar with that um, and of course Maybe the third cheapest option would just be to buy the ADL, ADXL 345 yourself and then wire that directly to your Raspberry Pi. That can be done as well, but you're going to be, you know, messing with wiring and connections, maybe soldering. So probably not, probably not the best option if you're looking to save a little time in exchange for a little money. So as of now, as of the time of the video, you can spend around 22 to 25 uh, plus shipping to get one of these. Um, there's the bed slinger option, which comes with two, 
or you can get a single option and that one's maybe three bucks cheaper. But under the covers, there's a Raspberry Pi Pico in there and uh, that will allow you, like I said, that's what kind of gives you the ability to connect it. It already has Clipper pre-installed on it, so um, you should have no issues. And definitely something worth looking at if you like it uh, or are curious about it, have any questions, feel free to um, comment on the video or hop over in the Discord and ask. But uh, hope you found this uh, video helpful. And thanks again for watching Greg's Maker Corner.